we found that these neurological patterns that are created by augmented reality are awfully similar to what's already going on in our brain. Is it possible that we could actually create a scenario where people could never get out of their augmented reality experience or never want to because it was so better than their real life experience and do more harm than good? So, Dr. Jorgensen, with the advances in virtual reality and augmented reality technologies, will we see these devices being pushed into the medical industry? We are so seeing already so many possible applications, uh, both in the works for the future and things that are happening right now. One of the best that I've seen is a uh, from a group called Mind Maze that is helping stroke victims learn to fight back by modeling the working parts of their body with the non-working parts of their body so that they can progress more rapidly. This in turn gives them a psychological incentive to heal faster and the results are incredible. This was done by Dr. Tej Tadi. Um, we also are seeing these applications in other areas in terms of mental illness and so on. So those are things that we can discuss. So how are these devices helping train medical staff? In the old days, we did not have access to looking at the inner workings of the human body or the human mind. And now, with the new virtual reality and augmented reality, staff can actually see what's going on with a patient. Also, in terms of learning skills, we can start to be inside the body and understand how an organ like the heart works or the mind works or the kidneys work in a way that we never could before. So it was more guesswork for the medical staff than it is now. And that's a wonderful new development. It gives us all kinds of options for the future. Now, how can this technology help people who are suffering with mental illness, or could it be quite as harmful for them to use? These are new uh, areas in terms of how could something like this be used? For example, for a young patient who was a stro was a paralyzed, grew up paralyzed, or for someone who was um, uh, schizophrenic and imagining things, and could we find a way to help them out of the nightmare that is their life? On the flip side, we could actually, because we found that these neurological patterns that are created by augmented reality are awfully similar to what's already going on in our brain, is it possible that we could actually create a scenario where people could never get out of their augmented reality experience or never want to because it was so better than their real life experience and do more harm than good? I feel that just as with um, virtual charities and other things, that there will be a push towards the real life experience again and not depending totally on these uh, augmented and, and virtual reality aspects. On the other hand, they've opened up entire new worlds to us that we did not have access to before. So do you think that we will see augmented and virtual reality in the hospitals in the future? Yes, definitely. And I think that I'm seeing so much creativity right now in terms of applications. And one of the things that came out of um, my, my meetings in Hollywood, etc., were the idea that we have to do a better job of creating content for these things that could also help us in therapeutic settings. So there, there's no question that there will be future applications. Well, thank you, Dr. Jorgensen, for joining us in our studios once again. Thank you for having me. And thank you at home for watching. Don't forget you can catch our previous interviews with Dr. Jorgensen on our channel. Goodbye for now.